Welcome to our ERC virtual Meet the Expert session, where I am pleased to host Jess Saul, who is intensivist in uh, Bristol, UK, and chair of the ALS Science and uh, Education Committee. Jess, welcome. What's uh, different for airway interventions during this COVID-19 pandemic? So airway interventions are aerosol generating procedures, so require airborne precaution PPE before starting and importantly it means that they should be done by the most skilled person starting off with two-person bag mask technique to ensure a good seal so that means a person doing the compressions pauses compressions squeezes a bag twice 30 compressions squeezes a bag tight uh, and a good tight seal. If they can, a supraglottic airway device may give a better seal than a bag mask, but again, a 30 to two ratio, pausing compressions to squeeze the bag to minimize aerosol generation. The ideal airway is an early tracheal tube with the cuff inflated, which minimizes the risk of aerosol generation. Finally, if you are doing tracheal intubation, using a video laryngoscope will help you keep distance from the victim's mouth. And again, may provide some greater degree of protection. So looking at the screen, rather than looking down into the airway. Although you should only really do this if you've got it available and already skilled in the use of a video laryngoscope. And then finally, another precaution is using a viral filter, such as a HME with viral filtering properties between the self-inflating bag and the airway so that exhaled breaths are filtered. Okay, the, do you think uh, jazz mechanical compressions still have a role? Well, that's a good question in that standard compressions can be more difficult in the presence of full PPE. They may tear, the mask may slip. And so if available and rescuers know how to use a mechanical chest compression device and deploy it with minimum interruption to standard compressions, a mechanical device can be used because it allows rescuers to distance themselves and also requires fewer rescuers and limits the problems with PPE, uh, gowns tearing, masks slipping. So it should be considered as an option in those settings where they already use it or have it. Okay, what about patients in the ICU and especially patients in prone position? So, a lot of our ICUs will have a lot of patients who do have COVID-19. And I think the first thing is, is that ICU teams should practice drills on how to manage cardiac arrest in ventilated patients, both supine and in the prone position. Staff should already be wearing PPE against airborne precautions, and if they're not, they should put it on before they start resuscitation. If the patient's already intubated and ventilated, the circuit should not be that will generate aerosol. So in general, avoid disconnecting the circuit when you can. And that means you know, turning the ventilator inspired oxygen to 100%, setting the rate at 10 per minute, adjusting the airway pressures so that tidal volumes are achieved. Clearly, if there's a problem with the airway, the patient may need re-intubating, and that, again, requires aerosol-generating procedure, PPE. If the patient's ventilated prone, 
it is possible to start chest compressions in a prone patient by compressing between the scapulae in the back. Most of these patients will have an arterial line in, so you can check the monitor to see if your compressions are effective or not in terms of generating a blood pressure and aiming for a diastolic of say greater than 25 millimeters of mercury. The key is that at some stage, the patient's gonna be needed to turn supine. So while you're waiting for your team to get together and planning this turn, you can start chest compressions. If it's a shockable rhythm, you can put pads on and you can put them either front or back or put them axilla to axilla and deliver a shock. And this all buys time to get a team together and do a planned turn back into the supine position to carry on CPR or, for example, to change a tracheal tube if it's become dislodged. And as I've said already, this is only rarely possible if it's already been practiced and rehearsed. You know, the first time you need to do it isn't the first time the patient arrests in your unit. You've got to have practiced it in advance. Okay, thank you for your time, Jess. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.